Why do we have a volcanic eruption featured in a museum exhibition on earthquakes? First of all, the 1912 Katmai volcanic eruption was massive. It's the largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. And over the course of several days, there was actually 14 magnitude 6 and greater earthquakes that occurred in association with the eruption. Secondly, the eruption had effects on the interior, ash fallout. In fact, hundreds of miles away, it was heard. The miners says here, if volcanoes were heard plainly in the interior, they assumed these were mining blasts going on. And as we'll see later, there was a magnitude 7 earthquake a month later, and as time went on, the locals kind of confused these two events, the Katmai eruption with the earthquake shaking, and it shows kind of the challenges of understanding the local effects when lacking the kind of scientific information we now have today. If we look at the stories spectacularly shown here, what we notice in 1912, first of all, there's no photographs. This is kind of prior to that era. The stories are relatively focused on national news coming in. Um, but what we see in this headline, Alaska towns buried in volcanic ash, Kodiak and Woody villages destroyed, 200 dead on the Alaskan coast, native population of seven villages exterminated. These turned out to be exaggerated. And the news has enough sort of credibility to a couple days later says not so bad as reported first. The loss of life was not as big, but there was still a lot of damage. And there we have an earthquake, another one occurring as we speak here. To convey the size of this eruption, one way is to, if we look at this map, we can see that the map highlights how far the ash fall was. It was all over Alaska, all the way down towards Seattle, the way the wind was blowing. In some cases, feet of ash coming down in the Kodiak region. Another way to look at the scale is you look at the caldera, one of the calderas at Katmai. This is showing a lake that's now filled in. Just to give you some sense of scale, this tiny dot right here is an airplane that happened to be float plane landed at the time this photographer was capturing this, this photo. Um, this just gives you kind of the sense of scale for um, imagining, you know, miles and miles of ash and debris shooting out into the air from these areas. Alaska wasn't even a territory at this time. It became a territory August 24th, 1912. We see in here, Wickersham again appears, Delegate Wickersham, the territorial representative for the District of Alaska, pre-territorial Alaska, has asked Congress to appropriate $50,000 for the relief of the Alaska volcano sufferers. As a reminder, we see Wickersham first in the very first publication of the Fairbanks Daily News Miner, May 1903. We see his critical diary entry that allowed us to better understand and revisit the 1904 earthquake. And we even see him connected in some ways to the earthquake one month later, which occurred while an expedition was trying to summit Denali. It was Wickersham's party in 1903 that made the first really major attempt at summiting Denali. So Wickersham is a major figure in Alaska. He's also the founder of the University of Alaska system where we, uh, where we are today.